This week on UND Insider Weekly, men's hockey is unable to complete the comeback against BU in the Frozen Four. Baseball snags two out of three from WAC leading Seattle. And softball has a rough couple of innings against Portland State. Head coach of that softball team, Jordan Stevens, will join us in the coach's corner to talk about his first year at the helm. And the panel previews the big conference matchups for baseball and softball. All this week on UND Insider Weekly. Well, it's good to be back home and welcome to UND Insider Weekly. Alongside Brad Schlossman from the Grand Forks Herald, along with Tom Miller and Paul Ralston from UND Athletics, I'm Tim Hennessy. We had a grand old time in Boston, didn't we? That was kind of fun, actually, our thanks to the people at, whether it was at the Great American Bar, or the, the Great Sports bar. bar, or the Greatest Bar, period, right? Yeah, apparently that's what it was. What a bar it was. It was. I never was. went in there when there were oh, people it was in packed. there. I guess it was packed <laughs> yeah. before the It was opposite ends of the spectrum from oh. when we were there to when uh, I went there when it was full of UND fans. You weren't there, so what's you What's this <laughs> business? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't there. You've got nothing to say We about. left him behind. You're down in AAA. Though. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, let's go back to Boston and revisit the uh, NCAA Frozen Four with North Dakota in a quarter a semifinal matchup with Boston University. And uh, I don't know any other way to put it, uh, you guys, other than it's almost like uh, whatever can go wrong with that team uh, in that situation goes wrong with that team in that situation. I think they've been the best team uh, maybe the last three times and haven't won. Yeah, I don't think there's any question they were the best three, the best team in the last three times. And you look back to uh, starting with Michigan, they outshoot them 40 to 20 and lose. Uh, the Minnesota game, UND played terrific. Uh, most of the, the Minnesota people are coming away saying, wow, well, you know, Adam Wilcox stole that one. And, uh, you know, against Boston University, once again, uh, I thought BU came out flying the first five, eight minutes or so and had some chances. And after that, UND was pretty dominant. And um, the key stretch, you know, it's a two to one game, and UND hits a couple posts and is all over BU. And they come down and score two goals on not grade A scoring chances and ones that you're just not used to seeing go in this year. And uh, that's the difference in the game right there. But yeah, I mean, at some point, to, you're looking to all these losses in the semifinals of the Frozen Four or in the Frozen Four and saying, like, what's going on? I, I think uh, in their seven Frozen Four losses under Coach Dave Haxtell, they've outshot their team and the opponent in six of them, and they've outshot them by double digits in five of them. Like, that, that's incredible. You would think it would even out at some point, and it doesn't. Well, that's what I said. You, you kick out a can seven times, you're out one of those times, you can <laughs> yeah. hit it in the middle, aren't you? You think. <laughs> It you just know. It's really something odd. It is. What does it say about college hockey when you're just a sports fan and you look at college basketball and all the high seeds, you know, you, you pick the Dukes, Kentuckys, and Wisconsin, they all go far, but you look at college hockey, the last two out of the three years, the last team in the tournament at large wise, I think, has won, is the national champion. It, it, you can't, there's no parallel there, basically. It's a different... I mean, it, it just runs differently. It, it, it's not a given because you've been a number one seed throughout the tournament and on the hockey side, uh, you don't see it happen. Well, it's such a fine line, Brad. You pointed it out that Providence, had they not pulled their goaltender when they played here at Ralph Engelstead Arena mm -hmm. against UND and gained a tie in that game, they wouldn't even been in the tournament. They would have missed the tournament completely. That's like some little thing way back in October. Yeah. They pull their goalie, get an extra attacker goal. Um, it's a tie, it ends, the game ends in a tie. And that's the difference between them either being crowned a national champion and, uh, you know, Nate Lehman being the coach of the year and uh, John Gillies being the goalie of the year or them being looked at as a huge flop this year. That's, the, that's how, how narrow the margin is. And, uh, you know, w with the way that these uh, last teams in the tournament have uh, had success, I mean, it just magnifies that margin. And I think a lot of times in sports we talk about parity of different leagues. And when you actually look at the last team in the tournament consistently winning and going to the Frozen Four, it actually exists. You know, it's not just uh, talk like it is sometimes. I think it comes down to Tom once in a while, two people get a little uh, upset with the, with the UND coach, I guess all the coaches, and putting the important significance on each and every game. And I guess when it comes down to the numbers that you, that you look at at the end of the year, you can't look at it any other way than every game has mm -hmm. a great significance, right? Yeah, you know, the, you know, we really look, start looking at it and how last year we noticed how the non-conference schedule can really impact your ability to make the tournament at the end of the year. So, you know, I think fans started this year to really take 
take notice and okay these these games before the conference season are really huge when it comes down to uh, you know seeing who's on the bubble, who's going to make the tournament. So I think fans are starting to come around on understanding that those games in October mean a lot. Uh, but I think it, you know, the more that things like this year happen, the more it's uh, going to amplify and uh, fans are going to realize how much you know, importance is in every game. Right now what's interesting is what's going to happen from here because there are, uh, and Brad, you've talked about it, wrote about it several times, uh, uh, Zane McIntyre, Paul Ledoux, Jordan Schmaltz will be the top three you'd look at. I know Troy Stetcher's been getting, uh, I don't yep. know if you want to call it pressure, but he's certainly been getting a lot of mm -hmm. attention uh, to move on to the next level, although B told me he said, I came here for four years, I'm staying for. Uh, <laughs> sometimes that changes. Yeah, we'll see. But, but what do you hear? <laughs> Well, yeah, I, th I think uh, the guys that are most likely to get back, like you said, would be uh, Troy Stetcher and Drake Kajula. I know uh, I've been told Kajula has at least one NHL offer out there for him. Um, Troy Stetcher, it seemed like... Um, talking to some NHL scouts at the rinks during the year, you know, you just kind of figure out what team they're with and you talk a little bit about the, the players who they have on their team and all of them say, well, what about that Stetcher kid? Like, every one of them <laughs> yeah. is asking about him. They were uh, a lot of scouts interested in him and then uh, on the big stage he had a, a great performance against BU and I think that only uh, magnified that. So, um, th their makeup of their team next year will heavily depend on who comes back and who stays. And uh, If you were a betting man, who doesn't come back? Uh, if I'm betting, I, I say Jordan Schmaltz and Zane McIntyre are the, the number one, number two, and then Paul Ledoux would be third, Stetcher, and Kajula. That would be my order of likeliness to, to sign. So um, if they can get back uh, Paul Ledoux and Troy Stetcher, their decor is going to be really good next year arguably the best in the in the country best in the league I would say so uh, that's something to watch and if, if they lose Zane McIntyre then obviously the goalie situation is up for grabs again. Tucker Pullman defenseman next year? For sure yeah yeah I think there's any <laughs> and so you can go out though and get those ninth grade in Minnesota just get a ninth grader? Yeah I believe I think so. They got to commit from this get crazy. Let's uh, switch 100% here let's go Paul you watched uh, the Indy softball team this weekend against Portland State at Apollo Park and uh, looked like maybe they had an opportunity at least to get one in the end, but uh, it didn't happen. I'll vote. So what's the story going on there? I thought game one was a, a pretty good game by, by the team on, on Friday. Uh, you know, the biggest thing for them, I think, and I think Coach Stevens will allude to it, is that, um, you know, getting consistent pitching performance through all the innings of the game, because I think, you know, they'll have a good three or four inning stretch and then have one bad inning, and it really puts them kind of behind the eight ball. And then defensively, they've been struggling a little bit at times, and it seems to kind of snowball on this team a little bit. It's not necessarily that they'll have a bad whole game. It's usually like an inning or an inning and a half where defensively they just have kind of a letdown and that allows a couple of free ones to, to cross and, and it really kind of puts them uh, in, a, in a spot of difficulty. So, uh, you know, they were encouraged going into last weekend. They had a good outing against South Dakota State down in Brookings, uh, but, but just weren't able to carry it over into league play or into conference play against Portland State. So they'll get back at it again. And the baseball team uh, went out to, I think, when it was looking kind of bleak for them a little bit, they went out to Seattle, played the top team in the WAC, Tom, and, and got two out of three there. The pitching has really come around, but and the offense has been pretty steady, wouldn't you say? Yeah, you know, after uh, Cal State Bakersfield came here when it was kind of sleeting, and uh, they got the sweep, and things were looking, like you said, a little bleak. And then, uh, you know, they've put together some really good performances. The, like you said, the pitching's come around. Uh, Zach Muckenhearn's giving them a really good game two guy. Uh, Andrew Tome is, you know, getting back to form. Alex Twangy had a nice Sunday start. So, um, and uh, Tyler Fallis, uh, leading, leading the whack, right? leading the whack uh, was at one point. I don't know what he was after this weekend, but at one point, uh, third in the country in hitting. So that's uh, it's a pretty impressive performance for a for a shortstop who was a walk on at one point from Bemidji. And they'll be playing the Bison a couple of times in non-conference play coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks. And up next here, his team has already exceeded their amount of wins from last year. And now, first-year softball coach Jordan Stevens joins us in the Coach's Corner. That's next. Every time I go to the golf course, I challenge myself to get better at the sport. Playing with my wife, there's a friendly competition about that that I really enjoy. I became a scratch golfer in three years. I got good at the short game by spending hours hitting from 100 yards and in. The equipment gets better every single year. I want the customer to leave with confidence in the equipment. I'm Jason Hicks, and I'm one of the golf experts at Shields. 
City's Area Transit, we go where you go. Did you know that riding the city bus is free for UND and Northland students? I ride the bus so I don't have to find a parking spot, and then I'm always within an easy walking distance to all of my classes. I'm going green, so I ride my bike everywhere. But when the weather turns bad, I take the bus. And why not? It's free. City's Area Transit, enjoy the ride. Coach was so mad. Oh, yeah, I, I, went don't blame their, I went into their dugout directly. Like, I'm talking like two minutes after the game, and I was like, "Can I talk to their head coach?" Uh, he's already on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Join us for the UND Champions Ball, benefiting UND's Student Athlete Scholarship. Mingle with coaches and students. Dance to Minneapolis band Power of Ten. And bid on exclusive UND auction items. UND Champions Ball, Saturday, April 25th at the Alaris Center. Get your tickets now by visiting undalumni.org slash championsball. We play to win, but it's bigger than winning. It's about authenticity, being true to yourself, genuine dreams and a country big enough to fit them, values and hard work, giving your best and giving back, working together, building a tradition bigger than any one of us and showing the world every day who we are and how we play. We're Big Sky. We are the heart of the American West. UND Insider Weekly is sponsored by Shields and Grand Forks Cities Area Transit. Friday and Saturday softball welcomes Southern Utah to the Apollo Sports Complex for a three-game series. Games start at 2 and 4 on Friday and finishing up at 1 o'clock on Saturday. You can follow the games on Twitter by following at UND Softball. Those games come right in the middle of a long 10-game homestand, which gives UND fans a good look at this UND softball team and first-year head coach Jordan Stevens, who joins us now in the coach's corner. First of all, when I say Southern Utah, I'm going Southern Utah for some <laughs> reason. I don't, I don't speak like that there, do they? I don't think so, Tim, but uh, you, you can do that and work on your accents. Jordan, you've won 10 games on the year, more uh, obviously more than more than last year, but no games in the big sky. What's going on here? Yeah. Little, uh, <laughs> That's what you're wondering, right? I, I am. I'm wondering the same thing. A little uh, disappointing for us, you know, obviously not what we had envisioned uh, coming into the year, but... Um, you know, we just got to keep going at it. We, we have not had uh, the success that we wanted to in the big sky, and it's been for a number of reasons. You know, it's, it's not, you can't just put your finger on one thing that's uh, held us back. It's, it's all parts of the game, but uh, we continue to work and we go back at it the, this weekend. Always a learning experience, but you, you throw in two freshman pitchers, correct? I mean, and that's, it's invaluable experience, but sometimes you take lumps first, right? Uh, sometimes you do, yeah, sometimes you do. You try to minimize that as much as you can, and yeah, two of our, our freshmen are, are throwing a lot for us, and um, uh, we've got a couple position players that have had to step in and, and throw some innings, and, and Soapy Pratt, who uh, didn't throw a lot last year, has eaten a lot of innings uh, as of late for us, too. So you do take some lumps. You hope that you minimize that throughout the, the course of the year. The one uh, positive thing that we've seen from, from especially our two freshman pitchers is they have stuff. They do have some stuff to, to be successful, but... Um, that stuff's got to go seven innings, and uh, we've uh, we seem to have fallen short. We get off to some good starts, but but can't close it down. And I think it's 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 kind of an interesting thing too. You talk about kind of getting over the hump. It's not as if you haven't put yourself in a couple positions. You know, just go back to the Portland State game on on Friday, the first one. I think it's four three. Mm -hmm. uh, things are looking pretty good. And just and and you've had other games like that, and you just aren't able to turn for a variety of reasons. <laughs> and and it's not just we talk about the young pitching; right. it, it's for a variety of reasons. And so, uh, so sometimes it's like, boy, we 
we try to pinpoint on one thing and maybe we take a stride forward and then we just, we're, is that kind of how it goes for you? Yeah, you know, if the game was five innings, we'd be really good. <laughs> um, but it's not. And we, uh, you know, you're exactly right. When we take one step forward in the pitching circle, our offense doesn't come and back it up. When we, when we pitch really good and we're hitting really good, the defense doesn't, doesn't do its part. And, and that has been kind of our entire season. We'll, we'll get two out of three phases of the game, but we can't get the other, third, the other phase in that same game. And, and we have. We've put ourselves in some positions to win um, and haven't been able to hold leads. I think there's been five or six games in the big sky that uh, we're up one in late innings and end up not being able to pull it out. So we, we've put ourselves there, but it's a seven inning ball game. Talk about Shelby Hard a little bit. She ties the record for home runs, yeah. you know, 13 on the season so far. Did you see this from her coming in? Um, you know, I, I, the fall was impressive for her. I don't, I don't think we expected uh, this kind of offensive performance, but you know, to her credit, she works. You know, she swings the bat a lot um, in, in her own time. And she goes and takes aggressive hacks. That's exactly what she's going to she's gonna take that for you. But uh, an impressive freshman campaign from her, especially at the plate, and now uh, holding down the three spot in our order, somebody that's called on to produce, and, and she has. And uh, 13 home runs still with a couple weeks to go is pretty impressive. And you guys have shown the ability to hit home runs this year, become a power hitting team. Mm -hmm. How do you do it in one year? You know, I suppose some of these players are freshmen, but right. uh, it, it's quite, kind of impressive to see a, a jump taken in power hitting, which is one year of your emphasis. Yeah, I mean, you change, you change mechanics a little bit, but a lot of it is mindset too, and them understanding that, you know, even though maybe I just did hit singles last year, that I can hit the ball with some power. And, um, you know, we work every day to, to change a mechanic to get our, I mean, a little technical but to get the bat down like this rather than like this, it takes some time. But, um, you know, yeah, we, we've done well at that, and it is one of our emphases of our offense, but uh, we've got to get more people on base, too, for those uh, home runs to count some more. Well, best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks for being with us today. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Jordan Stevens, the softball coach at UND. And after the break, both baseball and softball are home this weekend, both with big conference opponents. The panel and I will preview the big weekend matchups next. Join us for the UND Champions Ball, benefiting UND's student-athlete scholarships. Mingle with coaches and students. Dance to Minneapolis band Power of Ten. And bid on exclusive UND auction items. UND Champions Ball, Saturday, April 25th at the Alaris Center. Get your tickets now by visiting undalumni.org slash championsball. Did the A's and Royals fight uh, yeah, geez, got what, every day of their series or just yeah. the one day? No. I don't know, but when Laurie, did you hear him? Yes. Cities Area Transit, we go where you go. Did you know that riding the city bus is free for UND and Northland students? I ride the bus so I don't have to find a parking spot, and then I'm always within an easy walking distance to all of my classes. I'm going green, so I ride my bike everywhere. When the weather turns bad, I take the bus. And why not? It's free. Cities Area Transit. Enjoy the ride. Did your grandpa teach you to fish too? You bait the hook. I'm not touching it. <laughs> Look how far I can cast, Grandpa. You sure know a lot about fishing. <gasps> I caught a fish! Whoa! This was really fun. Can we do it again? Shields, gear up for a lifetime of memories. Visit UNDSports.com to vote on your favorite plays and games for this year's UND Insider Weekly's Top Plays of the Spring. You can also spread the word by tweeting using the hashtags UNDTopPlays and UNDProud. The special will air May 13th at 8 p.m. on UND Insider and youtube.com slash UND Athletics. It's the final spring practice for football coming up. Uh, Coach Bubba Schweigert and his guys have had a little better situation this year, obviously, than last year, and they'll conclude it with a scrimmage at Memorial Stadium at 11.30 on Saturday. And Tom, what have you seen from the football team this spring? 
Well, I think there's just a better sense of normalcy around the, the whole practice regime or regiment, and uh, you know, there's a uh, I don't know, there's just more depth at every position. Guys seem a little more comfortable with what they're supposed to do and what coaches expect of them. And uh, everything seems to run just a little little bit smoother. And they've still had issues with depth at the receiver spot, which uh, <laughs> was a big issue just actually during the season, but they still have had some issues to work around. And I, I remember reading uh, that basically there are guys that are getting a lot of reps, basically, because they're allowed to do so here during the spring, spring ball. You think that's a benefit? I think I think certain guys will benefit out of that. I think there's there's guys they'd like to see get reps, like a, a junior college transfer, uh, Alex Reed from from Iowa. Um, they like to see what he can do and, and get more comfortable in the system. Um, but then there's on the other hand, there are guys like a Luke Stanley or a Maverick Edmonds or Josh Seibel who get who get more opportunities to gain their coach's trust and uh, get used to what uh, Paul Rudolph expects from them in the offense. Coach Schweiger seems uh, real impressed, uh, comfortable with you know he wants to run the ball, run the ball. You have to have an offensive line. He seems comfortable with the depth and and, and the guys up front there too as well. Huh? Yeah, they, they return a decent core there. Um, they still have some guys they need to prove, and uh, you know they're still taking a look at uh, some mid-year transfers, some guys coming in in the fall who will, who will challenge for playing time. But a guy like Brandon Anderson, who's been an anchor on that offensive line for years, is a real nice guy to have as they're trying to build a, a new mentality with that offense. All right, let's talk a little bit about the uh, well, softball team. They first have Southern Utah in the Big Sky Conference, looking for that elusive Big Sky first conference victory. Paul, can they get it this weekend? I think they can. Uh, and I think it's going to actually, and I hate to like put too much weight on one player's shoulders, but we talked about uh, Shelby Hard, and I think that is, she's had an outstanding year, but I think one player that needs to get going at home that hasn't really got the bat going since she's been at home is Emily Bell. And Emily Bell bat, bats in the fourth spot for him and has proven this year that she can, can be big and swing a big bat for him, and she did it at South Dakota State down at Brookings. If she can get going and just get a few hits to fall in or, or drive a couple runs in, I think that'll be huge for him. And well, she's got to do it, or Shelby Hart's not going to get any pitches anymore. Well, that's exactly <laughs> I mean, really? that's exactly right. So, so I think that it, it, it comes down to maybe just seeing her kind of find that whatever it is uh, coming up this weekend. But I, I think they can. And the baseball team is at home against Sacramento State team that tied with them in the in the WAC conference right now as they battle for what top six teams go to the conference tournament. Uh, Boy, a lot of offense on this team, and now uh, the studs and the pitching rotation have, have come through. Things look kind of rosy for Coach Dodson's team, don't you think? Yeah, they've really turned things around. I think they're starting to get a little bit more production out of their um, complementary hitters. You know, mm -hmm. you kind of knew what you're going to get out of uh, Jeff Campbell, out of Tyler Fallis, Ryan Reese. Uh, I think they're getting a little more out of maybe a Cooper Moss or Zach Heeser or Luis Calvo. So, yeah, Luis um, Calvo, I thought last year, looked lost at the plate. Defensively, yeah, it's fine. He's, out there. Uh, but he's, he, he's nice hitting stuff. over 300 right now, so uh, you know they're getting some of those complimentary players to help out uh, those top four hitters they have that have been so solid for their careers. Do you know anything about Sacramento State other than their? They get to play in the sun, and they might not be too happy <laughs> to be here, conference, just like Bakersfield. <laughs> we could get some more Bakersfield weather, you think? Yeah, well, Bakersfield wasn't uh, pleased about playing there, but they, they played all right. So, I mean, I, I'm not sure how big of a factor that would be, but they have a big stretch at home here now, so they have a chance to, an opportunity to, to make some hay there. And a couple of games against North Dakota State, who has not had a great season so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they just ran into Oral Roberts, which uh, the rest of the Summit's understanding that that's uh, <laughs> maybe not the greatest thing to have those boys from Tulsa back. All right, everything is a bloom this spring season. That means they're growing. So there's still <laughs> plenty to look forward to. And the panel will let us in on what they're looking forward to next. UND Insider Weekly is sponsored by Shields and Grand Forks Cities Area Transit. Join us for the UND Champions Ball, benefiting UND's Student Athlete Scholarship. Mingle with coaches and students. Dance to Minneapolis band Power of Ten. And bid on exclusive UND auction items. UND Champions Ball, Saturday, April 25th at the Alaris Center. 
Get your tickets now by visiting undalumni.org slash championsball. Welcome back to Insider Weekly. So, what are we looking forward to this week, guys? Let's start with Paul. Uh, softball, first and foremost. Uh, you We're know, looking forward to playing golf. Don't give me. That. Well, that 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 also. Hopefully, we'll get some good weather. But softball at home. Uh, they're they're continuing this home stretch. They've got some non-conference games mixed in along with the conference games on the weekend. And I've seen the glimpses. You you see it there. And uh, we saw a heck of a web gem on Friday. Uh, Catherine Dorsher, who is a Grand Forks native. If you haven't seen the highlight, I recommend that you do so. It's it's fantastic, and, and it shows that they have the pieces, and can they put it all together this week? And one other thing that I'm looking forward to is track and field. They've uh, taken some good steps. They've had some personal records and some school records broken here recently, uh, both in throwing and, and, and in running. So uh, just kind of follow that. They'll be local here this coming weekend uh, down in Fargo for a couple of meets. So uh, follow the track and field team as well. Brad? I'm looking forward to uh, spring football and seeing the final uh, scrimmage there. Uh, went out there earlier and saw uh, the quarterbacks missed a few big plays there. Granted, it was about 35 mile an hour win that day, so you can't really blame them. But I'd like to see uh, on more neutral uh, weather conditions, which may or may not get, and uh, see how the uh, passing game uh, can evolve, even though we know it's not going to be a big part of the game. I think a lot of times if you're a run-oriented team, that opens up for big plays uh, in the passing game, and it looked like there were some there uh, the day I was out there, and we'll see if they can uh, put that in their uh, game plan for this upcoming season. What do you think, Tom? I'll say uh, looking forward to Uni Baseball playing Sacramento State. You know, those, uh, that pitching staff held down a, a good Seattle team that was leading the whack in Seattle. So come home and, and see if uh, Tommy, Muckenhern, and Twangy can, can hold down uh, another top end team. I'm looking forward to the baseball as well with Sacramento State at Craftfield and the NHL playoffs. No, those Mike, are always fun to watch. My Canadians and Blackhawks. Nothing better. Arsenal they... made another uh, FA Cup no, final. No, so they didn't. FYI. Uh, 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 all right, first of all, thanks to David Polsky upstairs and uh, Matt Schill done a great job uh, for us all season long. Let's hear it for that one. A little golf no, class no there. Golf from Miller. This is our final episode of the season, so I want to give a big thanks to our crew as we did in this great panel who we've had uh, since the beginning. Also, thanks to uh, Ralph Ingolstadt Arena for allowing us to film our show here in the Betty and make sure you submit your votes for top plays of the spring and catch the, sp uh, catch the special Wednesday, May 13th at 8 on UND Insider and YouTube.com slash UND Athletics. Then again on Friday, May 15th at 5 on Midco Sports Network.